Hi, my name's Brian. I'm going to go over how to install the belt on the 2011 Dodge Diesel with the amps alternator equipped with the single stack uh, or dual stack. It should be the same for either one as far as the routing goes. Uh, this is a picture of what the routing looks like. You can see that you've got your crank pulley, water pump, fan pulley, etc. Instead of Muncie clutch pump, just put in alt, uh, amps alternator in that position. Um, the first thing you want to do is you want to load the belt around the crank. And uh, to do that, you do that from underneath and you wrap it down below the crank. And then the fan pulley and the crank pulley you're going to discover real quick are very close together and on top of one another. So you have to have the belt going horizontally across between the two. And then you want to slide the belt. Uh, being that it's an eight groove belt, it's going to be difficult. But you just slide it in and rotate the fan counterclockwise or clockwise depending on which direction you're trying to slide pinch it through there you'll find that you'll be able to get it in no problem. The next thing you want to do is you want to loosen the tensioner bolt. That's a 13 millimeter half inch and you want to pull that out till it sticks out a good three quarters of an inch so that you can pull that out so that you can sneak the belt up behind it. Uh, the arm of the tensioner is on the forward part of the vehicle and you need to slip the belt in behind it. Loosening that bolt will facilitate that. Um, to get these, uh, to get the belt for this, uh, the part number, if you're going through Napa, is going to be a 25-081298. Um, if you're going with Daco through many of the aftermarket suppliers such as O'Reilly or AutoZone, um, the belt that you'll get through them uh, will likely have to be ordered, but it's a 5081300. And what that means is 130.0 inches. 508 in Daco just means that it's going to be an 8 groove belt and then this is how long that 8 groove belt is. If you're going with Goodyear it's going to be a 4081 300 and the preferred belt is slightly shorter. The preferred belt is like I say through uh, Napa and that's 129.8 inches and that's the one that the Ford vehicles call for. If you look up an 07 E350 or a Ford van 110 6 liter diesel turbo with the extra alternator like the ambulance package has, uh, you'll be able to look this belt up by using that vehicle, even though this is, of course, a Dodge truck. So, let's get down underneath and take a look at putting the belt on, shall we? You can look away if you get motion sickness. It's alright, I don't mind. So you can see I've already pulled the bolt out so that I have spacing on my tensioner and I've also pinched the belt through uh, to get it in between the fan and the crank. It's because of this uh, extension here, the retainer on the harmonic balancer, that it's uh, a difficult task getting that through. So the rest of this portion of the belt will wrap up around the fan and be good to go. Um, so you want to grab some slack and then take your tensioner and feed the belt up behind the tensioner pulley like this. And if you have two hands because you're not holding a camera, you count yourself fortunate because it's a lot easier with two hands. If I can do it with one hand, just think you'll do awesome with two. So I'm trying to line the belt up to be flat against the motor with the ribs facing the motor and then I just stuff it with my uh, middle finger and index finger. It's like I'm going to need a little bit more slack and there you have it. So once that's in place, um, go ahead and put it around your uh, AC compressor and you can put the belt on everything at this point. Um, when you get everything on, and you wrap it straight up to the alternator, the factory alternator, and get everything else on. Then pull it off the AC compressor, it'll go on last, and you'll push your tensioner up, and push up and in at the same time, and you'll fill the little tab, the little metal tab on the back side of this, click into the interface, and uh, it'll push in right about in that position. And when it's in that position, then you can tighten your bolt back down. And then from there, you put in a half inch drive ratchet, um, just like this one here. And like this one has a button, so you want to push it in. But this will fit right into the little keyway on the tensioner. You'll ratchet it to the pull position, 
uh, which would be like uh, tightening. So in this case it would be to the left and you're going to pull the tensioner this way after you've tightened the bolt in the middle of it and it's in its keyway. You pull it back this way and then slip the belt onto the AC compressor. So let's go ahead and go up to the top and see what it looks like at the top. There's the routing diagram. So we've got it around here and around there. So now we need to go straight up to the alternator, down around the water pump, up over this uh, idler, and then over around the power steering pump and the new alternator that we just put in. So I'll reach down here and grab the belt. And this part of the belt is going to feed over the fan and go down toward the alternator. I'm going to start aiming my ribs so that they are, you know, ribs to the inside. Looks like an alternate number for this is a 7612K BWK144. Or perhaps not. No, that's something from the... never mind. If I remember to edit, I'll edit that out. You don't need that information. <laughs> trying to conclude as much information, be as helpful as possible but sometimes I get something on a whim or I think something I'll throw it on there. Don't be thrown off. Or perhaps your belt will get thrown off if you get the wrong one. Okay, so you can't see a lot at this point. Um, you'll have access if you unbuckle the plug here. Uh, you can reach down through on the front side below your uh, power steering pressure line. So I'm going to go over the idler with ribs, under the idler uh, without ribs. So in order to do that, what I do is I put it over the power steering pump pulley, which is this close ribbed belt that you see there. I apologize for the Blair Witch Project effect, but it's pretty tough to hold still when you're holding the camera and fighting something. Okay. Get it up underneath of that one. I'm holding it with my left index finger against the bottom of the smooth pulley to make sure that it stays pushed against, you know, the way it needs to be. I just slipped the power steering pulley. And so now um, we're going back down to the bottom to get the alternator portion of it. In we go. All right, so I need to sneak the belt in around the crankshaft position sensor. And I've got all of this up in place. So the next thing to do is to tighten down my tensioner pulley. It feels like it's in the groove. Get into the groove. You've got to prove you've got technical skill. Yeah. Who sings that? Is that Debbie Gibson? I forget. But anyway, sometimes more detail is better, so I'm just going to keep filming all of this, and I'll probably post all of it. That way you'll kind of get a feel for the job. And my humor. Okay, so that is into the little nub. So you can see that's just about horizontal in the position that it's in. Some of you may be asking, what is that wrench you're using? This is a gear wrench. I'm using a 13 millimeter half inch will work the same. They're just nice because you don't have to restart over and over and over again. It's a little bit of a tight access, and if you don't have pneumatic tools or your air ratchet's too fat to fit in there, these are a great solution. Make your job a whole lot easier. Tell your boss you need to pick up a set that you have to have them and uh, charge it on the company's account. You'll thank me later. Okay, so that's all snugged up. Now as you look over here, you can see that our belt uh, is not quite getting to the alternator, even with all this slack pulled out of it. So now we need to pull the slack out using the AC compressor. So we'll get that off, and I just hook it around the clutch, just to kind of hold it. Because it seems like with these big long belts, they like to be in the shape they were when they were in the package. They don't like to be 
altered. And that's still not enough, so that's probably going to fall off the upper alternator one. We'll give it a try. And this is a little shorter belt. We haven't actually put this one on yet. So this is all fun new stuff. So I've got that on there. So now I need to go in with my ratchet and get that locked in to the little square. Line that up before putting it in. Have better results that way. Okay. There we are. So I'll put that into place, go from behind, barely fit your hand in. Uh, looks like I had it in the right position. And I'll pull out the slack. I'll try just setting that on my shoulder and see if that will film it. So I've hooked around my ratchet, pull the slack down. And I pull the belt into place and it barely gets on there. That is a good fit for this. You want it as snug as you can get it. And there you have it. That's how you put the belt on. And, you know, hopefully I don't have to share this video very many times. It looks like the belt slipped off up here on my fan, so I'll have to pull that back into place. But uh, there you have it. I'll go ahead and adjust that and we'll fire I'm it up. I'm to share with you a little ratchet trick. My ratchet is actually resting against a harmonic balancer. You can see how it's just propped up like that. And using the ratcheting of it, I can pull it up and then move it slightly uh, at the bottom of the handle toward the left so that it holds on there. And that will enable me to get up to uh, the section of belt that you see in the middle there that's coming off the fan. So I'll get that from above while my helper, the harmonic balancer, is holding it down here. Little uh, belt trick for you. So once the belt's on, be sure to check all of your grooves. I've got the tension on. You can see I'm not holding it with a wrench anymore. And as I go through each of these, I check them just as I did with that uh, uh, fan pulley and just make sure that the belt's in proper alignment so that when I start it up, it's not off a tooth and doesn't shred or uh, just completely jump off. I check all my pulleys. My pulleys look good down here. I'll do the same check from above and make sure that they're all good up there. And uh, then we'll start the vehicle. So I check up here and it looks like I'm good on my power steering pulley. I'm good on the idler, both grooved and smooth. I look good on the water pump. Ooh, I do look good. Man, look at me. Yeah. All right, so everything looks good, and uh, we'll go ahead and fire it up and see how we did. There's one more look at the diagram if you need it, and uh, let's do this. I don't hear any whacking or thwapping or... Everything running, let's give it the test of tests. Let's load test it. Let's see, which means I gotta turn on the master switch. Check. Load that one up. Check. Unplug this so it's unloaded starting out. Go for the double beep. Yeah, double beep check. Plug it in. We've got light. Looks good. Just chattering away. Looking at the bell, it looks like we're gonna be in good shape. Looks really good. Go ahead and gas the throttle and see if we can destroy that uh, $70 belt that I just drove three cities down to get. I'm not hearing any thwapping. 
I think we've got all the components of the bell. I think we've got all eight grooves intact. 